Amen. Let's just remain standing for offering now. Amen. Let's stand. All right. Got all them kids out of here. Uh, who's giving weed eater string an offering tonight? Is that my... St- <laughs> I need some of them. I need one of them kind that don't wear out. I need, Lord, have mercy. I spend more time fooling with the string than I do cutting the, the weeds. Let's everybody give tonight and honor the Lord. If you didn't get your money in Sunday, let's do that tonight. Could we do that? If you didn't get your money in Sunday, let's do that tonight. Lord will bless you for it. Lord will bless you for it. I guarantee it. He'll bless you for it. Uh, so uh, if you're behind, let's get caught up. Obey the Lord. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all you've done for us. Pray now that you'd bless this offering tonight. Let it be what you want it to be. We love you. Help us to do right. God, do what ought to be done here. Then multiply this money. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I tell you what, I work with those kids, and I've just had a blessed week this week, and I was telling, telling somebody today about this kid. I was glad I could look at him, and, and they put him in a group home, and he's, and he's away from his family, and, and, uh, and misses him. And I said, I'm going to tell you something. I said, I can tell you this. I said, no matter what you've done, the Lord ain't never quit loving you. Amen. Ain't that good to know? Yes. Hey. I mean, I tell you what I was telling, telling Shane earlier. That's what helps me Hallelujah. down through the years, brother. He ain't ne- I ain't never made a mess of it so bad that he just quit, that he's done with me or that he's quit loving me. Amen. Amen. Remind, remind me of the song I want to sing to you. Maggie came home one day with a raggedy, raggedy Ann. Said, Mama, look what I found in the name. Garbage can. He had a missing left arm and a right button knife hanging by a thread. She carried it gently up to her room and laid it on her bed. With her other dolls, she loves the broken ones, the ones that need.
y'all. Amen. I've needed a little patching up before, and I'm glad yeah. the Lord was there. Amen. Um, he didn't just throw you away. He didn't just throw you away when you need patching up. He'll fix you up and put you back in the, in the fight, in the battle. What a blessing that is tonight. I'm glad I'm here. I'm glad you're here. Glad the Lord's here. Glad everybody's here tonight. Um, let's pray for our kids. The Lord bless them back there tonight. Here it is, 20 after 7, already getting dark outside. Uh, uh, I guess we'll take it, won't we? I'm glad when we get to heaven, there'll be no night there. Amen. That means all these people like to go out and party all night. They'll have to be somewhere else where it stays dark. Uh, but uh, anyway, I'm glad I'm here this evening. We're going to do a little, little study here tonight. Hebrews chapter number 2. While you're turning there, I've had... Um, uh, this uh, 9-11, you know, I, I ain't heard, I don't watch TV on Wednesday, but uh, I ain't heard anything today. I turned on early this morning to see what the weather was going to be because I thought it was going to rain this evening, but I uh, hadn't heard anything. I guess they've had that 9-11 stuff on all day. And um, here, 12 years, been 12 years ago today that our country was changed, the world was changed forever. It's never been the same since. And uh, now we're all, they're all talking about this potential going to war with Syria. And the problem with all this stuff is this. Years ago, when American, our leaders, made a decision, we just all fell in our behind our leaders and everybody went and went to war. Now you don't even know who's telling you the truth and what the deal is. They might have all been on the phone last night talking it all over to rig up something to raise gas prices. We don't know. That's a problem now. You don't know who to support, who to believe. Uh, are, you know, who knows? Somebody, somebody said, well, I know this, and I believe that, and I think that all you know is what they tell us. <laughs> you know, that's all we know. You been to Syria lately? Uh, but I hadn't. All we know is what they show us and tell us, so who knows? All I know is pray God will help our leaders, help our president to do the right thing. Um, if, 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 if you know something about it, God, uh, pray God will help us and have mercy on us and His will will be done. Nobody in their right mind wants a war. Uh, but it, it all down to that little thing where if I walk out here and there's a big boy picking on a little boy, just beating him up, I have a responsibility to pull that big boy off that little boy. And there's all that kind of stuff. And I do believe that. I do believe that. Some people say, well, it's none of the United States' business. If a big boy's picking on a little boy, it ought to be my business to pull a big boy off. But if it's a setup to raise oil prices, I don't know what we do. How, who knows? Who knows? If you know, tell us. Well, I'm all ears. Anybody know? <laughs> Amen. If you do, you're welcome to tell us. Cause it's just all I know to do is pray God will help us, and His will will be done. Anybody know? Anybody want to say anything about it? Yeah, there you go. There you go, brother. That's it. There should be wars and rumors of wars. There's rumors of wars, ain't there? Anybody else? All right, let's look here at something important. Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2 is an amazing verse. There's an amazing verse in Hebrews chapter 2. I've always, always, ever since I've been saved, this verse has helped me. I'm not going to preach. I'm just going to, we're going to do a little study on this verse of Scripture. I've been pastoring church a long time now, and I've seen it over and over and over. Had it happen in my own life, and I'm sure you have and know many people who have. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, all this stuff we've been preached to all our life, lest at any time we should let them slip. Now, that's what I want to talk about tonight. What am I talking about? Let them slip. We ought to hang on to what we've heard. It, it did not say, it did not say to hold on to God. God's holding on to us. It said hold on to the things which we've heard. There's a difference. I'm not holding on to the Lord. The Lord's holding on to me. But I am holding on to what I've been taught. And you've been taught the right way. We've been taught. If you're not careful, you'll let stuff slip. And you, if you, all you do is stay in the world all week and you don't stay close to God and read your Bible and pray, 
you will start letting stuff slip that you know that you've been taught. I know people have been in church 20 years and now they're out partying and they're out clubbing and they're out going crazy. You know what? All this stuff they've been taught, they even question it. I don't even know if that's really... You know, you, you got to give the more earnest heed to the things that you've heard lest at any time you should let them slip. It's real easy to let things slip. You know that? We're not holding on to God, but we're holding on to the things that we've heard. Now, slipping. I don't talk about slipping tonight. Slip. You ever been holding on to a rope and you're holding on for dear life and you slip a little bit? That's what we're talking about. Or you've been trying to climb in school in the gym. They had this rope we climbed. And boy, we climbed and some of them boys did slide down it like that. And, and, and that's what we're trying to do. Uh, we're not holding on to the Lord to be saved. But we are hanging on for dear life to what we've been taught and what's right and what we know we ought to be doing. We're holding on to that. I'm hanging on. You ever heard anybody say, I'm hanging on? Uh, this old drunk woman used to call me all the time. You remember her? And she'd call, and, and every time she'd call me, I, I'd say, how you doing, sister? And she said, I'm hanging in, hanging out, and hanging on. That was her famous saying, hanging in, hanging out, and hanging on. I don't know what all that meant, uh, but that's what she said every single time. And brother, I, I, I'm hanging on for dear life. I'm hanging on for dear life to the things that I've been taught and lest at any time I let them slip. You know what? When I go to revivals and I get, we have camp, you know why we have camp meeting? We have camp meeting so that we can get a good grip on stuff that we've been taught. Because the world's against us. The world will wash you out to sea, brother. The world will suck you in out there. It will take over your life. The world, if young people, if you think you can listen to bad music and watch bad movies and, all, and never pick up your Bible and stay right with you, you are, you're crazy. It'll wash you out, brother. It'll wash you out to sea. It will. I'm telling you, you've got you to gotta hang on. And, and I'm going to say something else. You don't backslide and quit church all at once. You just slip a little here and slip a little there. Nobody backslides overnight. You know what? You know one of the first signs of, of backsliding is not coming to church on Wednesday night. I know people come every time the doors open. You watch them. People start missing on Wednesday night. Then what do they do? Start missing Sunday night. And then you start missing Sunday night. You miss Sunday school. Then you quit paying your tithes. And then it's just Sunday morning. That's it. I've seen a thousand of them. I bet do that. And just Sunday. And then finally you're out. Just slip, 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 slip. And then you're gone. You're gone. You're gone. So if you've got a good husband or a good daddy that sets, lays, sets his foot down and says, Bless God in this house. We're going to church. You ought to thank the Lord for it. You know what he's doing? He's giving earnest heed to the things that he's heard lest at any time you let them slip. You don't backslide overnight. You ain't sitting on fire for God one night and out in sin the very next night. It, it's a process. It's slipping it's slipping a little at a time, a little at a time. Um, we, got, we have a bunch of people that needs to rededicate yourself to the Lord. I mean, I, somebody told me the other day, uh, it was, I don't know if it was a preacher, a real dedicated Christian. They said, uh, Brother Danny, please, please pray. I think it was a preacher. They said, please. said, my 18-year-old daughter just come in and told us that she's gay. She shaved her head. She, done it. she said, it's killing us. She said, it's breaking our heart. She said, we're, we're tore all to pieces. And I don't tell all you parents in here, don't think it can't happen to yours. Don't think it can't. The same devil that's after other kids is after your kids. Don't think it. Don't think it. You might be surprised. You say, I've never had one of my kids. That's, a lot of people said that. A lot of people said that. If you, if you don't keep a tight grip on what's right, your kids will wind up in, in, a, in a mess. Yes, ma'am. Yep. I'll think again. A saved person can potentially commit any sin uh, that, a, that an unsaved. Me and a preach, preacher from Texas called me today, and we got in a discussion about homosexuals being saved. You know, there's a lot of people that believe a homosexual cannot be saved. You know that, don't you? A lot of preachers believe that. And they believe that because of Romans chapter 1 said God will turn them over to a reprobate mind. But I don't believe that because 
it don't say that he'll the first time they commit that sin he'll do that. It also names a bunch of other stuff in there, and it's a process before they're turned over to a reprobate mind. Plus, I've got a friend of mine that's been in the ministry 35 years that was homosexual before he got saved, and he's one of the greatest soul winners I ever met and stayed straight for 35 years. So I know that, that they can be just like a fornicator, an adulterer, or anything else. But Romans 1 does say, I mean, if a person keeps on and on in, in any sin, not just that sin, they can be turned over reprobate mind, and we're not got time to get into a study about what's a reprobate mind. But what was your question, Stephen? I says preacher's daughter. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah, the Lord. You, you check out Romans chapter 1 and read it close and slow. And it said, And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge... That right there is what pushed them over the edge. And, and, and it ain't the fact that God can't save them, but they just get so messed up they can't believe. It's not the Lord's fault. The Lord can save anybody, anytime, anywhere, any place. But they can mess themselves up to where they can't even believe. But uh, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of, if y'all want to talk about that, we will. But, but uh, that ain't in the, in the lesson tonight. Yeah, yeah, if you're saved, you're saved. He'll beat the snot out of you. You're kidding. Well, I know we had one that close. <laughs> don't hit your husband right here in public. Turn that internet off. Uh, what? It's weird, ain't it? It's like Jehovah's Witnesses. They're way more dedicated than we are. Most of y'all are. Most of them. Listen, to I can't even get nobody to come up here and weed eat. <laughs> Is the Lord leading you to go there, Megan? Yeah. No, <laughs> no, you. no, you're not. You're the cap. The cap cannot do that. No, it ain't acceptable. No, it is not acceptable. They go to heaven for saved, but if you're living in sin, you will be chastised. I would, I'm not the judge. I would say the majority of those people are probably not saved. That's my opinion. I'm not their judge. Yeah, yeah. We know, how in the world we get off on this? Uh, uh, but any, it, it's, sin is like any other sin, except it's worse. I mean, it's worse than most sins. That's a sin in the Bible. The Bible said the Lord, the, then the land vomiteth out its inhabitants. I'm telling you, that's bad. It don't say that about other sin. It makes the land puke. Yeah. No. Don't tell me that. I'm crushed. But maybe she may, she got like that after she wrote it. I'm crushed. That's not true. That's like saying an adulterer can't be saved or a fornicator can't be saved. I mean, that'd knock out half the three fourths, whatever. Uh, I don't know. Absolutely. You do change when you get saved. You lapse. God will beat the snot out of you. That's the way you know you're saved. <laughs> no, she's not either. No, God, y'all. <laughs> Lord, help us. Um, 
Yeah, let's all stop and have come to the altar and pray for them two women. <laughs> uh, no, uh, listen, this thing's coming, and we honestly got another study here tonight, but this thing's coming down the pike, and the day's coming. If the Lord don't come, we're going to have to deal with it a lot, more than we have been. Now, the truth is, if we believe what we say we believe as Bible believers, if you're a Christian, you're saved by grace through faith. It has nothing to do with your works, and God puts your name in the book of life. If you go back and commit sin, he'll chastise you. If you don't quit, he'll hit you harder, and if you don't quit, he can put you in an early grave. That's what we believe the Bible teaches. But you can't say somebody's not saved just because they'll do something I won't do. You can't say that because uh, everybody's got their own set of standards, you know, that, well, I'm saved, but I wouldn't do that, so if you do it, you're not saved. Uh, drugs, alcohol, sex, whatever it is, stealing money, robbing, being a crook, uh, uh, you know, crooked lawyer, whatever, abortion doctor. Can an abortion doctor be saved? Yes. Will they quit doing it? If they get right with God, they'll quit doing it. They, they would. They will if you quit right. If you really get right with God, you're going to turn from every sin you know to commit. That don't mean that a year later you might not sin again. If it does, they ain't none of us saved. Because all of us have sinned after we got saved. Amen? Okay, who wants to... Who wants to go ahead, Brother Mike. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It would. It would. You, you're absolutely right. It, it, you're absolutely right. There is a major difference in, in, in falling and then just jumping in the mud puddle and wallowing. There's a major difference. But there are people that do it, evidently. Yeah. Yeah. And they may go right back into that lifestyle. It, not saying it won't bother them, not saying that God won't deal with them, but they've given that flesh, and they'll be miserable, and God will yeah. deal with them. But their flesh is just as wicked as it always was. It's just like drinking alcohol. Like you, a lot of people got saved, and I believe really got saved, and then stayed straight for years, then lapse, or mess up, their family break up, go through a divorce, and go get drunk. And that don't mean they're not saved, but I tell you, if they persist... If you judge yourself, God won't have to judge you. If you'll keep yourself straight, the Lord will just lighten up on you. But if you say, like, he, like Mike said, I'm just going to go live with this person for 10 years, you're, and you're really saved, you're going to get it. You're going to get it, man. You're going to get it. That's what I heard. I'd get them out of there. I'd get them out of there. You do what the Lord tells you to. Yeah. You. Yeah, they get a pass. I've heard that too. I've heard that they get a special pass. From some, not all. But you know, you, you know, like I, saw, like I told you before, in 10 years, in 10 years, mark my word. I'm not a prophet, but mark my word. In 10 years, your kids will be made fun of if they're not bisexual. They'll laugh at them like they're a weirdo. They will. In 10, time these kids, little, our little kids get up in high school, you'll be a weird person if you're not at least bisexual. I don't know. There's a lot of reason for that. Go ahead, brother. Pastor, I'm going to use, always use the verse of Scripture, except you repent, you will likewise perish. So the Bible also repentance tells us repentance is not being good. That's like Jesus the Lord in your life. Now, Billy Graham's got a church guide book that he's got out on soul winning. And he says in the humble church session, well, just keep, keep them in there and keep repenting. And they step here for the seven. I've been asking friends out this for Buddy Simon. Well, I've got to keep them in 
Yeah, well, that's true. That's true. But like what Jason said is people are coming up now in a different culture than, than we came up in. A completely different world. It's a completely different world. And that don't mean God's changed his mind. That don't mean what used to be wrong. Ain't, that don't mean that at all. But it means they don't get it. They don't get it. They don't. They see it all the time. They talk about, oh, my friend's gay and this one's gay and this one's gay. You know, like it's nothing. Like it's nothing. Yeah. 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 They've been deceived. It's um, that spirit, seducing spirit. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It's changed just in the last couple of years. Major. Britney Spears really just opened the floodgates and then all them other ones. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. That's right. Like SpongeBob. I heard he's queer. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, I'm just kidding you. I did hear that though. I don't know if that's true or not. SpongeBob is is <laughs> Can you I don't know about that. That's oh my goodness. That's Corey's favorite show. <laughs> <laughs> Still is. <laughs> is Barney queer too? No, Don't tell me that. No, not Barney. I heard it. I said, uh, you know, when Disney went that way, he said, uh, this preacher got up and he said, if Mickey, tra- uh, what's Mickey's girlfriend, Minnie? Minnie? He said, if Mickey trades off Minnie uh, for, uh, for Donald, he's goofy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good name. If Mickey trades Minnie for Donald, he's goofy. All right, anybody else? It's not our study tonight, but let's seriously, parents, you better pray a wall of prayer around your kids because that spirit, it's coming in like a flood, just like water coming in around your house and stuff. It's coming in. You put a crack over here and it'll come in over here. It's coming in the windows. It's coming through the roof. You better build a wall of prayer around your kids. That's right. In schools and out west in California. In his age? Now they're now they're saying you can't like this this little this guy said, I'm a girl now, but he's really not, but he wants to be called a girl, treated like a girl, dressed like a girl, go in the girls' bathroom, everything. Hey, let me tell you something happened to me the other day, y'all. This is no joke. I was going, uh, I was coming back from Maryland. No, I was going to Maryland, up at his church. And I was way up yonder somewhere up in Virginia. I was getting close to, you know, the further you north, it was crazier than people. Look. And there was a girl, got out of a car, went right in front of the store in front of me. It was on black, looked like black leather pants, really, really tight like that. Black leather and wild looking hair looked like Marilyn Manson. And and I was walking around and I said, Well, there's a rock singer or something. And so she went in the men's bathroom. And I was going, that's why I stopped. I went in, I, I said, I ain't going in there. <laughs> that's the truth. I she went in the men's bathroom, man. So I went in the women's bathroom. <laughs> I did. I did. And I said, How messed up is this? Here's the preacher. Going in the women's bathroom. And I went in there and locked the door, and here's some. I don't know what that was. I ain't going in there with that. I thought it was a woman because you know how a woman, like their jaws or something, ain't, you know, their feet, you know, like a man's, you know, their jaws don't look the same, and their legs was like a woman's legs. She's walking right in front of me. I thought, well, boy, there's a punk rocker or something like that. Well, she goes in the men's bathroom, and I thought, I am not going in there. And 
turn that internet off. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Y'all, you're judging. <laughs> uh, somebody told me. Somebody else told me, it was, it was Kelly. Kelly went to, uh, brought some stuff at, uh, at Food Line or something in, in South Carolina. And she said she was just going through the line. And this girl behind the counter started asking her, said, how do you do your, you know, her hair? Everybody, you know how everybody likes her hair. She said, how do you do your hair like that? And she started telling her how she did her hair, you know, and everything. And said, what kind of stuff do you put on? She started telling her, get this, get that. And she said, all of a sudden, she realized it was a man. And she, and she walked out there saying, I just told a man how to do his hair. Like, and, and, and she said, she, she looked at it, sorry, I'm funny, but she said it was evident it was a man. But she thought a woman. That's where we're headed. That's where our society's headed, y'all. I'm telling you, you know, we have no idea. We're sheltered right here in this part of the country compared to with using out another... No, it ain't. No, it ain't. That's true. That's exactly right. You're right. All sin ain't the same. It, all sin don't have the same effect on me. That's like saying going five miles over the speed limit the same as going 80 miles over the speed limit. It ain't. It has worse consequences. There's certain things like killing babies and homosexuality that, that brings the wrath of God. And that might be why our country's in the mess it's in. And because we vote, you vote, you, we vote for it and approve of it. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I do too. Yeah. I know preachers that get up and do everything but cuss people like that, and then go out and eat so much they can't go to sleep at night. And glut. But, and that's worse. Homosexual is worse, but I'm just saying you can't. Yeah. 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 That's right. And that's what they think we are. They think we're just a bunch of hateful, judgmental, self righteous. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. And it's like this case that's just been out here the last month or two out in Florida and Washington. They told us that we just want our right to get married and we want to stay with you. We can stay with Christians now because a bakery that was on the street had closed down and they refused to make a cake for less than we And now those people sued them and sued the Christians. Now they had to close their shop down because of it. So it's not about giving them rights, they're trying to take over. That's right. That's right. Yeah. They don't want equal rights. They want superior rights. Yeah. That's, that's the problem. You ain't seen hateful. They were just, they were just godly Christians. Friend, very friendly. Very, like God loves you. Hold up signs that says God loves you. They'll share. And the other side came over and held up signs that said he, God is a homosexual and he can get his new boyfriend right now. So that's the signs they were holding up without any church members. Yeah. So yeah, definitely. Yeah. And matter, ever ma matter of fact, every mass murderer in history was homosexual. You can look at it, every one of them. All the mass murderers were homosexual. Man. Yeah. 
you have uh, you have this thing of like Brother Mike said, you got we have to hate the sin but love that person. It's the hardest thing in the world to stay balanced. Now, if a preacher really gets up and hammers it, you know they think well, he's being too hateful. But if you just back off and let it go, it takes over. So there's got to be a balance. Like like Lot, them angels finally said, Let's get out of here. There's no hope. This place is doomed. God's going to destroy it. And jerk Lot out literally out of they could say, well, you're too good to hang around us. You think you're better than we are? Whatever. God was getting ready to burn that place. And the Lord, and they had to drag Lot out of there just about. Somebody have a hand there? Um, I talk these boys today, my neighbor and them, y'all know the boot, boot camp up there. Moms, uh, they, they want to make a trail through my woods. And I said, all right, we'll go up here and look. And I said, I don't want it around my house because I don't want a bunch of people around my house because I got privacy in woods. But I said, I'll let you make a trail. And we walked up through the woods, you know, and everything. And I was walking up through there and briars, I mean, there's briars, grabbing them and everything. And I was going first. And do you know that, have y'all noticed that there's a lot of spider webs out right now? Good night. You can, I can't even walk out in my yard without getting spider webs everywhere. This must be spider breeding time of the year, boy. Because I mean, they're everywhere. <laughs> I've never seen. And you go, go up in the woods if you want. And they're, they was in my hair. I thought I'm getting spider. They're in my ears, and I was a slinging like this, going like that, in front, swinging a stick to knock down the spider web. And them boys are saying, "Man, these briars just..." There's three of them, and they said, "Man, these briars just wrap around your legs." And I'd be like my mom, and I believe Jesus did it. I stopped and had a little Bible lesson right there. We was way up in the woods, and I said, "You know why them briars is on there like that?" And they said, "No." I said, "Because of sin in the world." And they looked at me like, what? And I said, yeah, if they wasn't sin in the world, there wouldn't be briars and thorns and stuff like that. Originally, when God made it, you could eat anything you want. I said, you, didn't get, you don't get old and die. And they said, yeah, that's why we work out all the time. We don't want to get old. I said, you're going to anyway. you got sin in you. And, you know, they looked at me and they said, you're right. You're right. We had a little Bible study up in the woods above my house. And you know what? I thought, that's, they'll never forget that. The Lord, that's the way the Lord did it. I didn't, come, you know, you don't, you don't just come down on something and say, bless God, you, you're going to hell. I can't believe y'all, you know. Now, there's a time to say, preach on hell, and we should. Jesus did. But you can take every opportunity you've got to teach somebody a little Bible lesson. You can do it. That's what Jesus did. He said, the fowls of the air, the, the seed, the, the good seed, the bad seed, the trees, the fruit. The, the, he, every little old thing like that. He teach, and that, Melanie's talking about her girls. Do that with your kids. Every little old thing that comes up, teach them a little Bible story about it. And, and, and that's, the best thing you can do with your kids is get them in all the good services you can get them in and teach them right at home and live right, live right in front of them. That's the best thing you can do with your kids. Because you know what? I've been, I've been long enough now to see kids that are grown and you know what they tell Heather back there, Tracy, uh, some, some of these, uh, Jason and Crystal, you know what's made them stick in there all these years? Being in them good old-fashioned Holy Ghost services where God was real and God was moved. That'll, that'll keep them straight better than anything I know. Well, I've had, I had two texts today from two women, and one of them's upset. One of them was upset and said uh, we needed more for the young people to do. And one of them sent me a text and said they loved our church so much because it was so good for her young people. Well, you know, something's wrong there somewhere. This one that said we need more for the young people, I sent her back a text and I said, our church has the best thing I know of for young people. The best thing I know of. I said, the youth rally... There ain't nothing better in this part of the country for young people than our youth rally. Youth camp is the best thing I know of for young people. I said, we bring more young people to church than any church in Burke County. I said, if it sounds like I'm bragging, so be it. I said, don't. I said, we, we you know what? The services we have on Sunday, you could not get nothing better for your young people. I'm telling you, you listen, you're taking them bowling on Friday night ain't the way to get them turned out right, people. They said, well, I, we need activities for our young people. You think bowling's going to make them live right when they get big? There ain't nothing wrong with it. 
church wants to take your young people bowling, fine. If you want to take some of them bowling, I ain't against it. But you know what will make them live right? Get God getting a hold of their heart in these church services. That's what will make them live right. I'm not against youth activities. We need more. We really do. But Lord have mercy, man. It, that, ain't, that ain't what keeps the kid. Ask any of these that's lived right for years. Ask them if that's what kept them in. Amen. Pizza on Friday night. No, it sure ain't. You touch your mind, your mind goes back to that time when God done something for you. And the power of God moved on you. And the Holy Ghost got a hold of your heart. That's what keeps you in. And so, but anyway, I don't know how we got off on all this. Our time's about gone. Anybody else right quick?